Welcome to this video tutorial on creating stylized trees in Rhino and Photoshop. In this tutorial we're going to be creating some stylized trees using 3D models imported into Rhino and combining that with rendered shadows that we're going to get using Rhino's built-in render engine. To do this tutorial we're going to be using both this shadow layer and also a flat material ID layer and combining them together in Photoshop to create this stylized effect. If you haven't watched my previous video on creating a material ID for your Rhino files, which looks at how to split your kind of viewport into block colors based upon your layers as shown in this image on screen, I'm gonna put the link to that video in the description of this so you can go back and watch it. So to begin this video, we're gonna start by finding a 3D tree to download and import into our scene. For this, I'm going to be looking on TurboSquid and they've got a good collection of free 3D tree models. If you just click on the free option on their website, we can download them from here. And I'm going to be using this generic tree here and I'll put a link to this in the description as well. So we're going to go ahead and download that and I'm going to download the OBJ version of that file. And once we have that downloaded, I'm going to open up the file and here we've got our kind of textures and our OBJ tree model. Now we don't really need the textures for this particular tutorial, so we're just going to focus on the model. And in my Rhino file, I've just made a simple kind of ground plane and we're just going to import that OBJ in. And I'm just going to do that by selecting the file, clicking and dragging it into my Rhino file. When it asks me how to bring it in, I'm going to hit the import file option. And then we're just going to hit OK on the import options there and not change any of those features. Now usually these models come in quite, they're quite kind of high resolution, they've got a lot of polygons in, so they might take a little bit of time to import into your file. So we'll just let that import in like so. And there we have the tree file has come in. Now this particular file has two trees in, and I'm actually gonna delete this one on the left-hand side, and we're just gonna focus on the one on the right. And sometimes with your OBJs, they come in at the wrong, kind of orientated the wrong way. So we're just going to rotate this, just holding the shift key on that gumball. And then I'm going to move it upwards just so it sits in my plane, like so. So now we've got that in, I'm now going to kind of reorientate the objects onto some correct layers. Now you'll see here, I've got a layer for my leaves, my tree trunk, and my ground. And my layers are set up in the colors that I want these objects to be. So my leaves are kind of a, a lightish sort of green color. My ground is a sort of even lighter kind of grassy green. Like so, and my tree trunk is a sort of brown color. And once we've done that, I'm just gonna select the trunk of the model, which is usually separate from the leaves. We're gonna to go to the layers and we're gonna put that on the tree trunk layer. And we're also going to make sure that the display color here is set to by layer, which means its color will link to that of the color of the layer. So it will be brown to match that trunk layer. So you can see in the preview. And then we're going to do the same with the leaves here. Set it to leaves and set it to by layer there. And then we're going to end up with our kind of colored version of our tree. We'll just sort of move that just so it's touching the ground there. Now we've added these objects onto their respective layers. So we've got the trunk on their trunk layer, which is brown, and the leaves on the leaf layer, which is now green. I'm now gonna set up a kind of flat viewport setting to be able to display this object with no shadows on, just as a flat color. And to do this, I've already set this up and I've called this the material ID because the colors we're gonna get are based upon the materials and the color of the layer here. So if I click on that, you see we've got a flat image of our tree, our background and our trunk with no shadows on it. Now, in order to create your own kind of viewport setting like this, we need to create a new display option. And to do that, I'm gonna to go to display options down here. And under display modes, we've got all of our display modes that are currently in the file. Now to create a new one of these, I'm just gonna select the shaded view and we're gonna make a duplicate of it. So we're just gonna hit the copy button and here we've got called copy of shaded. And we're gonna call this flat color. And we're gonna call this flat color. Now, under this, we're gonna tweak a few of these settings in order to kind of give us that flat color view of our object. Now, we need to make sure 
that our background hasn't got any shadows on there and we're just going to leave this automatic altitude on there and we're going to close that one then under shading settings we're going to keep the shade objects turned on but under color and material usage we're going to select the objects color which will mean it will take the color from these options on the layers here and where it says gloss and transparency we just want to set the gloss value to a value of zero there and that's what we're going to do for the shading settings then for the visibility we're going to turn all of these off and this will turn off any lines and curves that are currently showing on our model there and then for the lighting method we're going to click on no lighting there so it hasn't got any light in the scene once we've done that we're going to hit ok and what you'll find is once you've made that if we're just on shaded for now you'll then have a flat color option here and if we select that there you have your kind of flat color id of your model so this is going to be one half of our image and then we're going to combine it with a rendered shadow in order to create this stylized effect now to do this i'm first going to copy the tree around a bit to create a little sort of forest scene so i'm just going to quickly copy the tree around the scene now before i copy this i'm going to first make it into a block and the reason i want to do that is i'm just going to select the objects type in block choose this kind of base point which is usually best to pick a point at the bottom of the tree and then give it a name and by making this a block what this does is it will reduce the kind of file size when you're starting to copy this over and over again instead of kind of trying to contain multiple versions of this model within your file it will just contain one which is then sort of duplicated in your file using this block parameter which eventually sort of lowers that overall kind of file size of your file and this is quite useful when you're copying around lots of heavy objects like trees in this case so now we've made this a block i'm just going to pause the video and copy this around to create a simple forest scene so here we have a few trees now copied around our scene to create this kind of little forest here and what we're going to do is I'm going to export out both the flat color version and then we're going to render out a shadow version of the scene as well. Now I'm going to start with the flat color version and we're just going to go back to our material ID here and we're going to export that just by going down to capture, capture to file, making sure it's locked to the viewport aspect ratio, typing in the dimensions that we want and making a note of these dimensions as well because we're going to replicate those in the render and then hitting OK there. And then we're just going to save this out as trees. Now we've saved that version of the file, we're then going to create our rendered version. To do this, I'm going to go to render and under current render, I'm actually going to set it to the legacy Rhino render. The reason for this is it's going to be slightly quicker in the render time, but it's also going to make a slightly sharper shadow. The legacy Rhino render is a slightly kind of older version of the render engine in Rhino, and it doesn't have the kind of ray tracing ability that the new version of Rhino render does, which means the rendering is slightly more accurate in this new version. But for the purpose of this video, we just need a kind of block color, really sharp shadow. So I'm going to be using the legacy render for this. Under render properties, we'll open this up and we're going to match that kind of 3000 by 2000 aspect ratio, but lock it again to the viewport. So make sure that that is locked and matches the previous image we did. We'll set it to good or final quality here. Um, and then we're just going to go down to the lighting and make sure it's just set to the sun. Under this, we can also go into the sun settings. And I usually like to control this on a manual control that way you can choose the height of the sun in the sky and also its orientation around the model. And once you're happy with that, I'm going to hit OK, hit OK back here, and we're going to do a quick render preview to have a look and see how that's rendering. Now that's finished rendering out, we can see that we're getting a nice kind of sharp shadow on the ground and the kind of right side of the tree is illuminated. So I think my lighting is looking good here. So we're going to go with this. And if you needed to tweak it, you can always go back and tweak those sun settings to get that perfect. So once you're happy, we're then just going to go to render and hit render there to render the full resolution image. Once that's finished rendering, we've now got our kind of final image here. 
But before we save it, I'm just going to do a few tone adjustments. And this is done under this tone mapping option here. Now under tone mapping, if we go to logarithmic, we can actually brighten the image up slightly. And you'll see by just clicking on that, it will already lift the brightness of the image. And what I usually like to do is just up this exposure value to try and get a slightly kind of stronger contrast between the light areas and the dark areas of the image. So usually up to a three or a four is quite good for this. And I'm gonna sort of put it up to around a three point one or two. And I think that's working quite well there. We've got a good contrast between the light side of the tree and the dark area here. So once we've got that, we're just gonna save this out and we'll just call this trees shadow. And I'm just saving this as a JPEG as well. So now we've got these two components of our file. We're then gonna import these into our Photoshop file. To do this, I've just located those two image files in my folders. And we're gonna start by just opening the trees color and we'll click and drag it onto the top bar of our Photoshop file here. And this will open it in a new file. Then what we're gonna do is we'll locate the shadows here and we'll do the same and just click and drop it on top of that image like so. Now, because we've set the sort of width and the image to match the aspect ratio of the viewport, these should naturally line up if we drop them in in this way. And we can test that just by lowering that fill color. There we can see that naturally lines up with the image below. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna create a copy of this layer just by holding the Alt key and dragging upwards to create a copy. And then we're gonna right click on this copy and we're just gonna rasterize that layer so we can make it kind of editable and use filters on there. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna apply a couple of filters to this to slightly tweak and sort of soften the sharpness of these shadows. You'll see they're very sort of crisp at the moment. And something I quite like to do is just go to the filter under stylize and oil paint. And this just sort of softens the edges of those shadows. And we can lower that stylization value down if you don't want it sort of super stylized. Something like that I think works quite well. And it just kind of softens that whole shadow edge. And we're just gonna hit okay there. Once we've done that, we're then gonna apply this as a multiply layer on top. And we're also gonna tweak the color of these shadows slightly. And to do that, I'm gonna open up a hue saturation adjustment layer just by clicking on the adjustment layers icon in the bottom right hand corner, going to hue saturation here. And then we're gonna apply this just to the shadow layer. And to do that, you can just hold down the Alt key and it will clip that hue saturation to the shadow layer below. And then in there, we can hit colorize and this is gonna color tint these shadows. So I'm just gonna scroll this up to the blue tone, up the lightness of this slightly and up the saturation. And all this does is just gives those shadows a slight blue tint there. Then all we need to do is just lower that fill color down until we get a nice sort of tone of shadow. And you can have it quite low if you want it as subtle as you need it to be. And once we've done that, that's essentially all there is to it. Here we've kind of created our nice shadows, applied them on top of that flat version of the tree to create this slightly stylized looking tree image here. As a final tweak, I usually like to add a texture over the top of these and something that works quite well with images such as these are paper textures. And we can just sort of take a paper texture like this, drop it on top of the image, make sure it's in its own sort of layer here. I'm just gonna copy this over to sort of tile it there. And then we're gonna put this on a soft light just to blend that over and you can lower the fill down slightly. And if we crop that in we've then got our kind of stylized trees here and we can always go back we could kind of change the hue saturation of the original trees if you wanted to make them kind of yellower or greener there more or less saturated and we could play around with the levels on those as well to up the kind of lightness or darkness of those particular tones and colors but essentially that's all there is to it to creating stylized trees using a 3D model imported into Rhino and rendering out those separate layers to then recombine them again in Photoshop. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on similar visualization techniques such as this, please be sure to check out the videos on the channel.